Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. As you can see, once again, we're in a really unique, awesome environment. The sun is out every once in a while. We've got some storms blowing in through here, which I low-key love. You guys know I love a good storm moment. The wind is blowing. The breeze is fresh. And we're just we're here vibing. Totally vibing. So... I wanted to check in with you guys, number one, and ask you how you're doing, how you're feeling. Number one, because I'm curious, and number two, selfishly, I'm still doing my research. I'm still asking you guys, based upon your rising sign, your moon sign, and your sun sign, what has life been looking like for you thus far? Now, if you guys have been following me on the new Bahati Life podcast, I was talking about how unique these transits are right now when it comes to finances, resources, investments, real estate, anything that we want to invest our time, our attention, our energy into, and even our money in order to get a greater return. That's what's happening within the astrology charts as we speak right now. This has been such a heightened topic of interest for not only our community, but for the world. A lot of people have their eyes on the real estate market, on stock markets right now, because the way that the planets are um, shifting themselves and prioritizing their focus, it's on those areas within our lives. At the time of me filming this, we have Sun, Uranus, Venus, Mercury, all in the sign of Taurus. Taurus wants to hyper-focus on our values, the things that are it is that are most valuable to us. And a lot of times, that is expressed and we can see that very clearly in how we spend and share our money. Why? Because money is an investment, money is energy. And we work really hard, most of us work really hard for our money and where we put that, where we place that shows what is valuable to us and what is worth it to us. Um, even something as, as seemingly mindless as like buying a luxury bag or luxury good, good um, goods can suggest that that person is interested in quality or what other people think about them. You know what I mean? So we don't want to look at it from a superficial level, a surface level. We want to look at the deeper root, the deeper meaning. So as you can tell by the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about the Scorpio full moon, which is going to be happening the 27th or the 26th. Okay, yeah, the 26th at 1131 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is gonna be one of those major power cleansing moments within this year. And there are a few major moments that stand out to me um, this year, but this is one of the ones that I've had, I put a star next to it. And you guys might've seen that in the Astro Tarot guide that I wrote, the ebook guide for 2021. So if you have that, feel free to go ahead and follow along. This is one of those times in our year which it can really go high or low, up or down, depending. And it doesn't have to be one or the other. It could be both at the same time. The reason why this is, is because, again, the full moon is happening in the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is known for its intensity. It's known for its attraction. It's known for its potency. And with full moons, all of that energy is unavoidable. It's the things that it is that we have to address, the things that it is that we have to see, within ourselves, within another person, within our bank account, within our career, whatever the case is. We have to see it, we have to address it. At the time of the full moon, the, the moon is opposing, directly opposing, sitting, that means it's sitting directly opposite, Mercury, Venus, Uranus, and the sun sitting in the sign of Taurus. Now, again, Taurus is connected to what is most valuable to us. So this could be the time, the quality time that we spend with um, others, the quality time that we spend with ourselves. It could be you guys wanting to make really strong investments with your money, with your resources, with your savings. It all depends on what Taurus rules within your chart. The thing is, is that Uranus is the planet of disruption. It's the planet of revelation and revolution. And Uranus is now sitting through the sign of Taurus and it's very unpredictable. This is where those highs and those lows are coming from, factoring in and, and then factoring in and, and additionally our feelings, our emotions that are up rising to the surface with this full moon. This could really be a very hot button week. 
And this is not, when I say week, you guys, I don't mean Monday through Sunday or Monday through Friday. The, the, the planets don't work with our timetables. They work with energy. It's the days around this full moon that are going to be very heightened, emotionally volatile is a good way to say it. But if you are wise and if you're working with this, it could be a really awesome moment, a, a, a time in your history, in your life, where you can totally power cleanse an area of where the, the planets are drawing their attention to. And again, this is the area of your life that you find the most valuable, that you want to and have been called to lately, investing your time, your energy, your effort into it. There, As I'm saying that, you guys, there is a big, massive surge when it comes to, I want to say reprioritizing, but really what it is, it's refocusing on your fears. It's those crippling um, addictions, those crippling thought processes, the crippling, crippling mental health belief systems or emotional um, habits or rituals or relationships that you have not, this would not be the first time that you've addressed it or you've seen this before. It's that fear that when you're about to take that step forward, something about it locks you up. It feels, it makes you feel very powerless. It makes you feel very susceptible to damage. It makes you feel very open and vulnerable in ways that you may not be 100% comfortable with. In fact, chances are you're very shook by this. You would feel very shook by it. You would feel a little scared and that's okay. The reason why the planets are showcasing this is not to make you feel bad, not to punish you, not to make you think that you're you know, doing something wrong or to second guess yourself or what you see for yourself or your investments or for your relationship or for yourself. It's the fact that these inherent beliefs that are lying dormant are the, the, the very thing that is stopping you or, the, or this addiction or whatever this case is. Let's say you have a loan. Um, the eighth house is connected to other people's money. So it's how they are able to control what you are able to do or it's almost like a, like a slavery type of situation almost. Like you're kind of like a slave to them. Before you can do this, you have to do this, 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 and this. So at the time of the full moon, these stipulations show up. They reveal themselves. And you are then given the power because at the same time that you are taking, you have this feeling of powerlessness, you are given the opportunity to see where that's at so you can find your freedom, so that you can free yourself, okay? And make, pave a way for yourself, pave a path forward to move forward. Because again, there is so much on the line for you guys. There's so much to be gained from this. There's so much value. There's so much investment. There's so much um, abundance that is there. But it can't happen if you are stuck in, in an, a sense of obligation towards something or someone. Let's say taxes. Let's say your taxes are a little off. You have to address the tax situation. Let's say the relationship is off. Okay, this, this relationship that you're in, you know, you have this bigger picture that you see for yourself, this vision that you know that is going to come to fruition, but the partner that you're with is saying, okay, well, I, I need to do this, I want to do this, or this is what I want my life to look like, and they're putting that, that energy as a priority or as a focus. So you kind of end up being almost a slave to that. You almost have to compromise for that. So these are issues that at the time of the full moon, it presents itself, it reveals itself to you, and then that's when you sit and you ask yourself, okay, do I want to embed myself in this any further or can I find a way out? Can I free myself from this? And again, there's a lot of emotional, volatile energy that comes up with that because it takes a lot of bravery. It takes a lot of awareness of your self-worth, of your self-desires and prioritizing your own hopes, your dreams, your wishes and have the fearlessness, the, the courage in order to take that step forward. The one thing too that I want to talk to you guys about is that Mars finally moved out of Gemini and now he's uh, moving through Cancer now. He doesn't like this. Mars typically doesn't like being in the ushy gushy mushy type of stuff. He doesn't like to deal too much with his emotions. In fact, he would rather be out and about exploring instead of being at home and dealing with the issues of the home environment or the, the issues of, okay, where do I belong? Where, what, what emotional needs am I, am I, am I missing, right? So as tricky as this can be for some people or as tricky as Mars um, feels navigating through these waters, um, this is really also another opportunity for you to feel and free to prioritize uh, comfort while you are taking these steps forward within your life. So 
I, I know this sounds crazy, but a lot of people, if you flash back into your childhood, for some people, we had comfort blankets. We had um, like a like a safe like a safety net, something like a teddy bear or a hug from your parents or um, sucking on your fingers. Something so simple that you could do for yourself at the time of your childhood in order to comfort and to self soothe. As adults, that energy doesn't go away. In fact, a lot of times we almost suppress it. So these are things where when Mars is moving through the energy of Cancer. This is where our activity is high, heightened and highlighted and we are encouraged to find different ways in order to self-soothe and make sure that we feel comfortable regardless of how our lives are looking like at the time of the full moon and all the events that are occurring. For everyone, it's going to be totally different. Some people love to go for walks or some people take naps or some people watch movies or some people call a friend or talk to their family or whatever the case is. Again you know pick your poison but make sure that the poison is medicine and not something that's toxic and draining to you okay the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about and one of the very last things that I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that the part of fortune is still moving through the sign of Gemini now part of fortune uh, reveals to us where this treasure chest is right this treasure chest that can be very helpful and um, beneficial to us and help us to kind of break through these barriers you know, while the ground underneath us is kind of breaking and, and crumbling, you know, underneath us, right? Gemini connects to the energy of communication, gossip, neighborhood trips, asking questions and being curious. Your curiosity, your playfulness, your ability, especially with the vertex point sitting in the sign of Leo at the time of the full moon, your curiosity, your playfulness, your asking questions, your connecting, and communicating and networking are, are all so highlighted. This is one of the things that I was talking about in the Bahati Life podcast for this week is that you want to listen to the murmurings of the world. What are other people saying? You want to pick up a pulse of what the world is or what society, what's going on in order to get little tips and tricks that could be helpful and beneficial to you. Again, the part of fortune rules this treasure chest that is buried and it's buried in the sign of Gemini. So not only could this come through in the energy of a Gemini person or the energy of you know Gemini expressing and revealing itself, the idea of the twins, but look towards Twitter, look towards social media, look through gossip in order to hear information and facts you would be so surprised where it is that it comes from, especially with Uranus sitting in the sign of Taurus. You would be so surprised where this information comes from that would be so beneficial to your growth, to your blessings, to your abundance, okay? There is a lot more that I could be talking about in this week's video, but you guys know I've been trying to keep it short and sweet and to the point. I'm gonna shuffle some cards and see also, like what other information is coming through, but for the most part, look at that, Ace of Cups. So this is the card of new beginnings, emotional beginnings, emotional fulfillment. Um, and something about this, I'm hearing emotional truth. These are things that we don't want, and this is bringing me right back to Mars, maybe we could sign a cancer. So these are things that we might have a hard time sitting with or feeling or observing or diving into, but the planets and the cards are suggesting that there is a lot of wealth there for us. There is a lot of blessing there for us. And it's there to prioritize your emotional wealth, your emotional well-being, and emotional you know, growth and prosperity, like abundance, in all the many different forms, as uncomfortable as it may seem. Some of you guys might you know, swim in those waters a little easier, depending on how your natal chart is set up. Um, if you have a lot of water sign placements or even earth sign placement, you might be far more comfortable than the air or the fire signs. But for the most part, you know, it could be really refreshing, especially if you're someone who's always caught in your head or someone who's always caught moving and then you find something that just kind of like feels like a bath soak. Look, eight of cups, right? So for some of you guys, at the time of the Scorpio full moon, you might really be called to emotionally leave something behind. You realize that you are no longer emotionally fulfilled. You know that you have gone as far as you can in this area in your life, and now it's time for you to branch out and move forward. 
if you guys think about it, the Eight of Cups plus the Ace of Cups creates the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups is the card of wish fulfillment. It's wishes and desires that come to fruition that make us feel so happy, so grateful, and so emotionally satisfied. That's what I want to see for you. That's what I want to see for me. That's what I want to see for our tribe, okay? So I hope this message reaches you with perfect timing. Make sure that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. Look out for me on Bahati Life Podcast on all the major plat podcasting platforms such as Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. I can't even like remember, but it's been pretty awesome talking to you guys with that. I did promise that I would talk to you guys about how to become millionaires in 2021 and 2022, which is going to be really, in 2023 to be honest with you. Um, maybe if it's not, if your intention is not to be a millionaire, look, two of cups, we got to work together. Um, maybe if your intention is not to become a millionaire, then at least to triple, quadruple, and whatever is more than that, your income and your growth. That's my next focus and my next priority. I don't know why. Um, I just feel so called to talk to you guys about it, like investments, as we're moving forward into the future. Um, I just feel like we live in such an abundant universe. It's one thing to talk about law of attraction and setting an intention, and it's another thing to talk about the material realms of that, which is not a bad thing, but it's it's actually quite a, a blessing. We live in a very abundant universe, and we all should be growing and being prosperous and, and living our best lives. So go ahead and share this video as much as you can. Give it a thumbs up because it does make a difference, not only to the engagement on the YouTube platform, but also for me to know that you know this message is making sense, it's resonating, and that it's helping you to move forward. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.